All right, so about a year ago, I made this guy. It's an Arduino radio. I styled it after the old Philco radios. I was very happy with it, but as time has gone on, my uh, design skills have gotten a lot better, and I wanted to do uh, a revisit on this. And the article did pretty well that I wrote for Instructables, so I want to make a another version of it that uh, is a little bit better, and I'm actually already done with it. It's uh, this one. This is... I don't know, it must be the, the third or fourth revision that I've made on this. It's not an FM radio, it's a Bluetooth speaker. And a couple of improvements is that this one was only uh, uh, powered through a plug-in. This one's actually battery-powered, and there's a little charging circuit and everything in there. So I'm very happy with how this one comes out, and this is the one that uh, I want to show you guys how to build up. So here's a CAD file for it. It's... Uh, I went out of my way to make it as easy and quick to assemble as possible, so there's only a couple parts that are actually used in it. I develop all my stuff in uh, Fusion 360. So this is revision 3 or 4, I think. But just wanted to show you guys, and then the first step for this is uh, printing out all the components. So I'll hop over to the printer and show that. Here are the parts all staged out. I tried to make it simple and only use uh, two colors. The prints actually take quite a long time. I think this one is about 14 hours to get done. Only two of our printed pieces actually have uh, supports. It's going to be the outer case and the base plate. The outer case has one bit of support that goes around the side here. And then the base plate just has supports that go around these holes. The only wood part in this build is the front panel. And I'll show you the way that I did it. It's going to be dependent on the tools that you have. And even if you don't uh, have the tools, you can just 3D print this piece. I came up with a uh, system of building them up fairly quickly and doing it consistently. But if you have a CNC machine or something like that, it might be a lot faster. The first thing that I did was uh, take some birch ply, uh, stain it with red oak, and then polycoat it, and sand it down. And then I cut it down into 4 inch by 3 inch pieces on the table saw. I made two more 3D printed jigs. So the first one and just pop it in if it's it really snug. And this gives us an outline of where to drill and to put our holes in. Once the wood's in the jig, your goal is to just hog out as much of the material in here as you can. For the first cut, I'm going to be using 18 millimeters. I'm just going to cut along here. And this next cut, I'm just using 35 millimeters because that's the largest uh, drill bit that I have. Once we've hogged out some material on the drill press, I'm going to come over to the router table and with a quarter inch flush trim bit, I'm going to run alongside the edges around here of both the uh, openings, and that should give us uh, our perfectly sized holes. Now just pop it out of the jig. Depending on how tight your tolerances are, you may need to use a small screwdriver and just pop it out. Looks like that with nice clean holes. And then we're going to want to pop it into our second tooling jig. There. And then we're going to go back over to the router table.
Actually, before the router table, I'm going to smooth down some of these corners on the bandsaw. And that should be more than enough. Once you're done with the router, just take it out of the jig and then clean up all the burr with an X-Acto knife or some sandpaper. All done sanding and it should look pretty good. If you don't have access to some of these tools, I'll include step files so you can just 3D print uh, the front cover in whatever color you want. Everything in here is just off-the-shelf components. I went for sort of an in-between. I didn't want to have to print my own circuit board or anything, so I just was able to get all these uh, stock components off the shelf. I'll have a full uh, list of the parts on the Instructables page. But what I do here, and I like to add a drop of hot glue, or super glue right there it really doesn't take much even that's might be a little bit too much get it in and each pot each part uh slots in perfectly so we can keep it there this is the charging circuit this is our five volt amplifier And the last part is our Bluetooth module. So these detents are there, so they line up perfectly every time, makes it easy for assembly. And it needs to face in these directions. So you want the power for the amplifier and the Bluetooth module to be lined up. This makes it a whole lot easier when it comes time to wire. But you want to keep these here and just let the glue dry. It should only take a few minutes. Okay, one last part to glue. You want to take the uh, button panel and your three millimeter LED. Place it right inside there. It's back. And I'm sure most people know this at this point, but a little tip is that a pinch of baking soda uh, instantly cures super glue. Right. Take the button panel and put it inside the front of the unit, making sure that uh, the larger hole is on the left. Grab your 10k pot and you want to put it in so that the leads are facing outwards. There's also a little tab in here for the little tab of the potentiometer to slot in. It can be a tight fit, but drill it out if you have to. Just pop it in. Last one, take the power switch. And just pop it to the front. For the LED, uh, the longer the lead is positive, the shorter lead is going to be ground. So I'm going to take about five inches of wire and solder to the longer lead. So I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on first. This one is our ground connection. So I'm actually going to trim it down just a little bit and solder a 1K resistor. Next, I'm gonna solder 
three five inch wires to the potentiometer. Now that the glue is dry, we're going to move on to soldering the board. For all the connections, I'm going to be using either of these. These are just little leads that I cut off the end of uh, resistors and LEDs. Or a 22 gauge wire. I just get mine from an uh, old Ethernet cable. And the first part that we're going to start with is connecting two power and ground rails between the amplifier and the Bluetooth module. All right, the next thing we want to do is tie left channel and right channel on the Bluetooth module together. This is going to make the sound mono, which we're only using one speaker, so it has to be mono. Next, we're going to tie ground from the power module to the Bluetooth module and the amplifier. The top lead on our potentiometer is going to get soldered to one of the channel outputs on the Bluetooth module. Then our uh, middle lead on the potentiometer is going to be soldered to the right channel input of our audio amp. And the last, our bottom uh, lead on the potentiometer is going to get soldered to the ground connection. Because we're only using the right channel for audio on this, I'm actually going to tie our power LED to the left channel output of our amplifier. Next, uh, we're going to tie the power switch to the positive out of the uh, charging circuit to the positive rail of the uh, Bluetooth and amplifier board. I soldered two 5-inch wires to our 3.7 volt lithium-ion battery and we're just going to take it and put it into the grooves of our uh, outer case. Right there, it fits in nicely. Now I'm going to take some zip ties, feed them through the holes. We're just going to solder the leads of the battery to the terminals on the charging circuit negative to negative, and positive to positive. All right, the last thing to wire in is our 8 ohm speaker. So once again, I'm just going to take two five inches of wire and solder it to the back. Now just solder it to the right channel output of the amplifier. Made a small mistake. The center pin of this pot needs to go to the right input and the bottom pin needs to be ground. I need to just swap these two wires around. I'm just gonna do that here. That's it for the electronics. So we're gonna move on to assembly. First one that I wanna do is take our uh, speaker clip and just press, press it into place. And then I'm going to come over the back. This one's unnecessary, but hold on, let me get that to line up a little bit better. 
It's held pretty securely in here, but I'm just going to come back with a little bit of hot glue just to give it that little bit of extra hold. But the next part that you want to do is come through with some super glue. And on this inside ring over here, just give it a couple drops. Once you got some super glue in there, just gonna slide in the speaker. Press down. Make sure it's a good fit. With our speaker cover and our mesh screen, all we're gonna do is just add a little drop of super glue there, and then maybe in the corners. And then just pop down screen. Once the glue is set, you can take it and just pop it into the hole in the front panel for it. It's a very tight fit. Now take our uh, potentiometer knob cover and there's a little groove in there and you just want to line that up with the slot in here. All that's left is final assembly, so slot this up in for the grooves, take this, press all the wires in there, press down, oh, and hold it all in place with uh, some three millimeter screws. There you have it, that's fully assembled. Okay, so here are a handful of the ones that I've built up. This is the original, and these two are the same as the one that we just built up, which is this one. So let's turn it on and see how it works. LED turns on. Enter to Bluetooth. It asks you to enter. Bluetooth connected. It connects automatically. It connects automatically to this computer. Uh, the device name, I think, is BT 5.0. Uh, I've had other modules that had different device names. One of them that I have is VHM-314. But this one, uh, this one is the most common one. about it. It works well. I'm happy with how it came out. So if you want to build yourself one, that's how to do it. And here are a few examples of what it would look like if you choose to 3D print the front panel instead of making it out of wood. Okay, I see like and subscribe. Okay, there was a bit of power.